Hello, this is Asa Laveau, founder of Genius Academy. Uh, what I do for a living, what I do for others, is I train aspiring entrepreneurs on how to create their first $10,000 in business. Um, and yes, I even train queer entrepreneurs on how to uh, do the exact same thing. And the reason why I'm doing this particular video is because sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And so I want to let you guys know what it's like to be a queer entrepreneur. So first of all, let's talk about that word queer. Why am I using that word? Well, the reason why I use that word to describe myself or people that I like to help is be, uh, it came because I also started something called Queer School. Queer School, what Queer School is, is it's uh, a nonprofit and the website for that is queerschool.co. So it's a nonprofit and the purpose of that nonprofit is to uh, make sure that LGBTQ youth around the world really do understand that they are enough, that their lives are necessary. Now, you may, based on where you are in the world, you might be thinking, well, that's everywhere. Well, in places like New York, Miami, Chicago, uh, LA, San Francisco, yeah, it really is everywhere. It really is everywhere. And guess what? I'm from Oklahoma City. And a lot of my friends are from towns, counties that don't have a very large LGBTQ presence. So because of that, no, it's not everywhere. And everybody just doesn't spend all day watching RuPaul's Drag Race or Queer Eye for the Straight Guy or anything or, you know, reruns of the L Word all day long to make themselves feel like they are being seen. So that's why I started Queer School. And what that's what Queer School is for. But the reason why I started it is because I actually pitched the idea to another organization, actually to a pride organization, an organization that actually puts on pride events. And though they say they loved it, they didn't really get it. So I was pissed off. I was hot. I was mad as fuck. Like hot, hot. Oh, I was hot. <laughs> like I flew out here to pitch you guys this thing and you don't even fucking want it. I was hot. Oh, I was hot. So by the time I got in the car, it hit me and it hit me hard. This, this term for the school, which is queer school. And I'm like, Asa, you can't say that. You can't call your, you cannot call your school queer school. You cannot do that. Like there has to be some law that says you cannot call your school queer school. <laughs> like people don't like that word. And so I sat there in the car. I didn't even start it up yet. I'm just thinking. And I got clear. A lot of times when there's this dissonance between you know, this stroke of brilliance and then your mind or your mindset in the moment, usually I say you need to just shut the fuck up and be quiet and get clear. So I got clear. I got really clear. And the thing about it was that the term queer, though it has a very painful and real connotation to those uh, in the LGBTQ community, um, I say if you were born even the 80s. If you were born in the 80s and before that, yeah, it is very highly likely that the word queer brings about a result that does not feel great and it does not feel amazing. And I honor that experience. And at the same time while I'm honoring that experience, there is really uh, this adoption of this word queer as it relates to uh, the younger LGBTQ youth. So again, if you're born in the 80s and after, you sometimes, a lot of times you take on this word queer as pride, as an umbrella term. So you don't have to, you know, say all day long, you know, I'm gay, bi, trans, like you're queer. Um, it means I'm different. 
accept it, don't accept it, but regardless, we're together. There's a family of queer people. So already, that's where that term comes from as for me. So for Asa, that's why how Asa uses queer. All right. So now, what does it feel like to actually be a queer entrepreneur? The, I'm going to start with fear. I'm going to start with being afraid. And this is why. As a queer entrepreneur, again, not in a society like in a big city or some place that is highly uh, accepting, what that feels like is fear. And so that fear comes from telling customers because you put yourself, um, you put yourself in limbo of losing business. So you could possibly say, you know, I'm queer, I would love, like I would so love to work on your car as a mechanic, but the person leaving the car like, that's bullshit. How dare you, how dare you bring that lifestyle on my car? As though there's a queer demon and the queer demon <laughs> is gonna be transmuted from our hands to your car and then affect everybody that's gonna be in your car. Yeah, so if you're coming on, hello. I see you guys coming on, hello. Thanks for coming in. Uh, if you have questions about this or thoughts about this topic, feel free to post them. I can read them um, while I'm live. So a lot of times it does come from a place of fear. It comes from a place of fear by if you have not come out to your family. And no one's required to come out. I'm not here by saying everybody needs to come out. You have no idea what people experience when they come out. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is uh, a lot of times you're living a dichotomy. So there is the you that you know to be true uh, and you feel like everything about you that is true and that is real, uh, nothing about that is professional. So maybe the way you talk, you feel like that's not professional. The way you like to dress, uh, you know, conforming to gender norms or cis standards, uh, all of those things, whatever is heteronormative where you are, you feel like that's the definition of professionalism. And so because of that, you put a lot of yourself away. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to do that uh, because the people that are meant for you will come for you. It's the same thing with me being black. Yes, I'm black and queer. So when you're black, you know, if somebody wants, because I hired I've been hiring people since I was 22 years old. I'm 35. And I've never told any person of color to, you know, make anyone else at ease by not showing their blackness. And I'm not going to do, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to do the exact same thing for any of my queer friends. You don't have to tone shit down to be uh, productive. And matter of fact, I'll say that for my, my, my personal journey, when I did come out, when I was more vocal um, on the fact of being queer, my business began to actually go up. I don't, I'm not sure why, <laughs> I'm really not sure why, but it's almost like people felt a more ease. People felt a little bit more ease around me. Things weren't as cumbersome. So there's a lot of benefit uh, to operating as a queer entrepreneur. And sometimes people just really wanna support what is different, what is new for them. So that's a little bit of what being queer is and the possibility of it. Um, and if you know any queer entrepreneurs, I ask you that you don't make them fit into your particular jar of what normal is that you actually embrace someone else's level of normality all right so that's all i have uh, if you're if you are a queer entrepreneur if you're an entrepreneur that is interested in uh, creating your first ten thousand dollars in business please know that the entrepreneur playbook at this time is closed however we have a wait list the link is provided but there is a wait list uh, that will be opening up soon. So with that being said, I am Ace Laveau, dreams and blessings.